All right, hello everyone, and uh, I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Uh, today our topic is different from what we used to do. As you see, it's not about uh, Islam or you know politics or crimes or you know. It's about uh, you know questions we have in our life, and we usually we struggle with them. I receive an email from somebody who needs some help. So I decide to go for this topic. Uh, the question I received was about, uh, you know, this person is struggling uh, of being a Christian and what he needs in life. You know, how, how, we, can, how we can be both. Uh, it's for sure, it's very hard, you know. Uh, like, you know, a young man, he need uh, he have needs. He have needs, uh, and the needs goes from east to the west. Uh, he need a company. He need a woman. He need money. He need a job. Uh, he need a future. He need security. Uh, so I said to myself, "Well, this is all is what all of us we need. It's not about just a young this young man. Uh, he think he is like different and." Uh, uh, struggling with his needs, so I said, let us, you know, let us do a little uh, talk about it and try to be more, uh, you know, a little bit deep in in what we are struggling with. So I welcome everybody to share with us if you are interested in this topic, you know. Uh, okay, Sam, give me the question. Give me the question. And if your question is stupid, I'm going to block you. So all of us, uh, we have needs, and the needs can go from, you know, different perspective of life and where we are, like what is our age, what is our gender, uh, what is our um, um, money position, uh, skills, education. Uh, so everyone have his own different needs. And those needs will never stop, and they will never be, you know, like uh, ended. It, it doesn't matter how much rich you are, as an example. Still, you will find yourself always have needs. Uh, you know, a person who is rich, not necessarily he feels secure. He might be actually feel he is very much insecure. Uh, he might feel even he is so poor, even though he is so rich compared to others. Uh, someone is healthy, he might think he is not. Someone is not healthy, he think he is healthy. Someone is stupid, he think he is smart. Someone is not smart, he think he is smart. I mean, everyone, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say that we have different place in life, and each one of us, we have eyes. For sure, some of us are blind. They are not blessed with the ability to see. But we are talking about uh, you know, like ability to function in life around us and to see things. But each one of us, when we look, if you are walking in the street, you don't see yourself walking. You see people coming toward you or people leaving you, like, you know, coming from your back and they are walking, maybe they are faster than you. So you see their back. And there is other group of people that are coming to you and you see their face, you know, and your eyes are staring at everybody walking by, through you, away from you. And, you know, you will find that your eyes is looking around, trying to, uh, let us say, make a map of what's going on around you. A map for the people, map for the movement map for the occasion, map for uh, your safety, uh, when you cross the street, when you don't cross the street, uh, what if people are wearing. Uh, in your mind, maybe you are thinking, look what this woman, she is very crazy. Oh, oh look at this, what, what this man is doing. Uh, so like in, in life, you might be looking at people around you because you have a certain position, but always, whatever the position is, you don't see yourself. Your eyes is not capable 
of making you able to see yourself. So in your process of life, you will see everything around you, but you don't see yourself. And that usually goes for everything we do in life. So we judge somebody, but because we see him, we don't see ourselves. You know, we judge the person, look what he did. But we don't see what we are doing. Or let us say we don't want to see it sometime. We judge what people are dressing, or we judge what people look like, but we don't want to look at ourselves. First of all, we don't even see ourselves. Like, you know, if there is no mirror, you never see yourself. You cannot. You can see the back of your head. You cannot. You can see how your shoulders look like. Uh, so human being, because always he is captive to his needs and his ability. So always he is struggling with certain issues in life. But how we can enjoy this life if all of it is about needs? Every step in your life is about being needy. You never stop being needy. You need medication when you are sick. You need food while you are hungry. You need water when you are thirsty. You need to get warm when it's cold. Uh, you need a companion when you feel lonely. Uh, you need a company. Uh, to feel better, uh, you need. I mean, this just, this is how you are. Like all your life is about I need. And then through life, we try to figure out how we can get our needs. Now you know today I chose the word wolf uh, for a very simple reason. You know, like like when we like you know the, the Messiah, our Lord, he said. I will leave you between wolves, right? Like, you know, but is, is being a wolf something bad? <laughs> uh, when the Bible speaks about the wolves, it's speaking about us as a human acting like wolves. Otherwise, wolves are not a bad animals. In fact, they play a good role for controlling, you know, diseases and, uh, you know, uh, to keep nature in shape. So the diet of the wolves made them who they are. If the wolves eat the grass, they will not be called wolves. They will be called maybe sheep. But the diet of the wolf, his need of food, certain kind of food, based on blood and meat, put this wolf in a position where people are calling him beast. But if the wolf eat different diet then the wolf will be something different but the wolf is not a is not a bad guy here you know he's a created in a certain way it's like a mosquito you know the female mosquito she need the blood when she want to lay eggs so what she do she go look for blood to suck she's designed this way it's not because the mosquito is bad even though we hate them for what they do to us but the mosquito is a mosquito. The mosquito does what mosquito do. Now you as a human, you have your diet too. And your diet is your challenge. The difference between the, the wolf and a human being, that human being, he can change his diet. The wolf, he cannot. I don't know if what I'm trying to say to you is, you know, is a, uh, you know, you know, English, English is not my first language, so I try my best to make it simple. A human being is different from the wolf because you can change all kind of diet. In fact, you can control a lot of your needs, including your sexual needs. A wolf is an animal. He has no ability of control. 
a wolf he cannot resist his nature of hunt when he see an animal to kill he cannot resist his let us say uh, uh, system program system that he should survive in killing an animal is the way to survive if you you know if you have a cat uh, in your house maybe many of you has cats you will see how the cat is even the baby ones she gets so excited when you move uh, something in front of it like a you know something look like a snake or something look like a belt you know or anything why because this cat programmed to hunt hunt is what they do they have their sharp nails which is very powerful even though they are tiny <laughs> cat but they can kill a human being in fact there is a story about some stupid people they decide to do revenge from cats for eating their food so they close the door and they decide to beat the cat and the cat killed them the cat is just a small lion so animals and a human we share many things but the difference between us that God when he created a human he gave him ability to control his needs to drive his needs to be needs let us say uh, legal or let us say moral or let us say legitimate or let us say uh, acceptable like a man he want a woman well the first need is sexual you know the man is attracted sexually to a woman and the same for the women but the man he can have sex with the women without marriage he can rape a woman he can you know he like a woman she is a pretty he decide to take her against his her, her will the, the, you know here in this scenario this human being is acting like a wolf the wolf he don't notice that this female don't like him or what he care he want to take the female she is a female he is a wolf you know he would do whatever he can if he can do it he would do it if he could not then maybe the female is stronger she will resist so a human being is different because simply he can and he should like he, uh, he have the ability to understand that there is something is acceptable even though the needs is the same when a man he marry a woman there's a huge difference between that and when a man he rape a woman both of them at the end the rapist and the married man they will have sex with the women but when he do it in a moral way and one he do it in a wolf way so in our life we struggle a lot which way we should get our things and how we can get our things done our needs is in this our need for money is endless uh, our need for position prestige you know like you go you see a lot of people you know like wh why somebody he wear very thick uh, uh, chain made of gold what that would do I mean what why why I'm wearing that actually because this person in his mind he have a need to show off and he think if he wear such a chain in around his neck he is more attractive and he is more powerful and he is more let us say uh, flashy you know like he, he like to be under the spot of light and he think that those things will add big value to him other person he will not even put that a chain around his neck even if you kill him so there is a human being he put a chain because he think this is a need 
and there's other human being he think this is absolutely stupid need to have the difference between the first one and the second one that the first one who have the chain he think he grew up in a society or a culture where having those things in your neck will make you look better uh, make you look powerful uh, make you look uh, that you capable you know like I have money uh, right so like you want to convince a woman that you are making good money then you wear those things you wear flashy clothing which is very stupid by the way it looks stupid and silly but you don't blame them because simply this is where they live and the society they are around it's, it's that way they worship those flashy things the man the simple man value is not in their culture in different place you might see a man he is more respected for he is simple way more than someone he is putting those golds and silver around his neck and his hands wearing expensive watches uh, but as we said everyone he have his own way to see needs like when a man he go and buy those expensive watches I'm not I, I, I don't have I don't I, like I don't wear a watch last time I had a watch it's when when cell phone uh, appear you know in the market since then I did not have a watch uh, because simply why I want to have two watches I mean the cell phone is a watch and you carry it with you wherever you go so why you want to have a watch so I find there's no need for it no more so I dump the you know the ten dollar watch from Walmart you will find somebody he want to buy a watch costing maybe ten thousand dollars twenty thousand maybe some some they say there is some watches for a hundred thousand I don't know but why I need that watch because simply this person he see himself in that watch he don't see himself without it he think his value he think his uh, uh, people will not see him good unless he is flashy so where this is all will take us you know we have the young man who emailed me talking about his needs and he's struggling in life how to be Christian and we mentioned many 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 things the reason I mentioned them is just to show you different aspect and different you know angle of a view of, of, of life a woman she is old some of them they want to be young I'm not I'm not saying this is bad no I mean I understand women they like to be to look good uh, but there is other women they don't care they don't care if they look young or not so the perspective of need change from a person to person from a place to place from culture to culture even religion plays a big role of needs like you know a Muslim he need to go to do Hajj why because they told him if you go there around the black stone and you kiss it it erase your sin so now the poor guy in Indonesia he saved a lot of all his life money so he can fly to a country far away he have nothing to do with it fooling himself that he is going to kiss the black stone now and he's going to be new are you with me <laughs> So because now he have a need based on his religion he is going to waste all his money this poor man who works so hard poor country like a person in, in, in Bangladesh how much he make a month a hundred dollar fifty dollars how much is going to take him to save six hundred six thousand dollars this is mission impossible and then when they save it they go spend it in the pocket of the Saudi so here you see that the need to change why because of religion so religion can do a negative impact in your needs in your ability and capability in your understanding of life in your functioning for the way you function in life when a person based in his religion he gave a charity there is people they give a charity because they believe a charity is the right thing to do like Christians that's how they believe but there is people they give a charity because they think if they give a charity they go to heaven those are the Muslims 
they are not giving charity because they like to help the poor, but they are bribing God, you know, good deeds. It's, it's religion based on something called good deeds, you know. So you kill the Christian, you steal their money, you give a charity to the Muslims. Uh, so here we have a different perspective of what is called, called good deed and bad deed. But how we as a Christians, or even if you are not, how we can survive this life with needs and how we can be stronger and smarter and more successful. So I said to myself, let us have a discussion about it and let us tell people first why we don't make a list of it's really what it's really need for us. <clears throat> Who of you here can tell me what is the most important need he think about he, like something very important for him? What is the most important need you have? Can somebody help me? And don't, you know, I mean, say whatever you want. Just be honest. <clears throat> Water? Hmm. God, air, health, oxygen, honesty, <clears throat> wife, ability to provide, family, Jesus, security, keep health, salvation, wisdom, physical or spiritual, what about? In fact, you know, all what we just said did not change anything from being, uh, let us say, we are just making a map, you know, a map of our needs. So, in one hand, we need salvation. In the other hand, which means we need God, you know. In the other hand, we need to provide. We need to have a family because, you know, we as a creation or creatures, by nature, we are social. <laughs> and we are, if we don't have a social uh, 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 or let us say a social network around us like family friends relatives we will be living very sad so social is very important in the top of that we have to focus all those things based on our needs like sexual needs, money, material, uh, health, uh, uh, work, uh, money, you know, you name it. All of those, we have to make them go in one side and not to break the rules of being a Christian. So let us say break the, uh, uh, the connection with God because the second we decide to have our needs out of, the, out of order, we decide to be away from God. So for a Christian, some they say, it's really very hard for a Christian to be able to have his needs. Still, he is following the book. Don't people lie? Don't people misrepresent uh, themselves? Uh, don't people every day claim something about themselves they are not? You know, as an example, just to make it simple for you, when a woman and a man, they, let us say, a man, he like a woman. So, and let us say he is a decent person, he want to marry her, he is not trying to play games, you know, he's not trying just to get the women in the bed, he want to marry the women. But the first thing a man he do, and the women will do, is to present themselves in a good way. So you put yourself in a display in front of this woman and you try to show her always the best of you. Like how smart you are, how, uh, you know, funny, how, you know, uh, how people like you, uh, how you much you take care of yourself and uh, you like to see if she like what you dress and how, you know, so like you present yourself always as if you are in a display. Uh, because at this moment, it's the time to impress 
this woman so she will like you in the other side the women she do the same so she put my makeup and eyeliner lashes you know uh, lipstick perfume and you know she tried to present himself like a flower in front of you so at the end of this both of you are presenting something is not you both of you are trying to convince the other person of something is not you because if this is you you do not need to do those things so those things became additional in your needs coming to the first need which is to have the women and for the women to have the man <clears throat> so now we have additional needs which is buying expensive clothing perfume uh, accessories watch uh, uh, you know uh, uh, necklace uh, you know earring uh, uh, you know um, expensive makeup but those are not part of the needs supposedly the need is the man he want to marry a woman he like her she like him and <clears throat> suddenly we find ourselves swimming in other lake of needs which is spending a lot of money to convince each other that i am good and she convinced him that she is good <laughs> that is the wolf inside you are you getting my point that is the wolf inside you the wolf inside you is not allowing you to be a human the wolf inside you doing his best You know, in the animal can, a king, a kingdom, animals, they have a play, like sexual play. So the male, he tried to convince the female, or the female, she tried to convince the male. <clears throat> the difference between us and the animals, that animals are more honest. They are. Human being, he try to present himself in a way by covering himself by accessories hoping that those accessories will make him look better and more appealing so if i have a big house i am more appealing than someone he is else you know another guy he don't have a house or he have a small house if i have a nice car i am more appealing for this female from someone he don't have a car she will take a bus well which one you like to marry a guy, you know, he do uh, your grocery and you are sitting in your car. Uh, and maybe he have a driver, you never know. <laughs> or a guy who will say to you, take the bus. So the needs are the same. And then the accessories, they come. And the accessory, usually, they are the wolf inside you. The wolf inside the women if he is big you know if, if her teeth <laughs> say is big then she will choose the man who have money not necessarily intelligent or he is uh, you know a good company no no you know she is ambitious to have uh, uh, like meat every day in the table she is the wolf inside her want to eat meat every day she don't want to eat you know, simple dish of salad with the guy who work hard work and he come back home and he's smelling so bad and maybe the shower, the hot, the hot, water, uh, hot water is not working. Maybe they don't even have hot water. So the wolf inside you decide what is your target and how you can accomplish your target. So some of us, they can control the wolf inside them and make him, a, let us say, uh, a sheep. Very friendly, easy to move around. Other of us, they will not even try. In fact, they try to feed the wolf inside them to be bigger. And those people usually, they never ever be happy. We have a Muslim, he keeps saying to me, 
he found an error in the Bible. I mean, this is what Muslims are about. Look what we are talking about and look what he's talking about. I mean, the guy, he have he, the whole Quran is an error. Hail is come from, coming from mountains in heaven. Sperm coming from the backbone. Women have a sperm coming from the ribs. And he is talking about error in the Bible. You, you know, this is what I'm talking about. You see those people, they have a wolf inside them. And they want to feed the wolf. They don't see the hump. They are like a camel. The camel, he have a big hump in, the, in, the, in, in his back. But when the camel, he look around him, he laugh at the horse. He laugh at the donkey. He laugh at the sheep. <laughs> look at them. <laughs> because he don't see his back. Those are the Muslims. <clears throat> and this is why today we are trying to be, to understand life better, not to be like them. They are following a child molester and they think he's a good guy. I mean, the guy literally, he F a five years old girl. And then he is the best of mankind. Why? Because the wolf inside them ate the truth. Don't let them even see the truth. They become blind. They don't dare even to question. <clears throat> so we as a Christian, we have a different way to see life. We are not the same as those Muhammadan who kiss a black stone. And they think it is God's hand. We are not stupid. Going back to our topic, I'm sure the Abdul who told me he found an error in the in the Bible. Now he is sorry for what he said. What a bunch of dummies! Look at you. I mean, you have religion. Half half of your book is about the penis and down. And you are coming to us to talk about my Bible, you idiot. So going back to our topic. How we can manage the wolf inside us. <clears throat> Should we even manage the wolf inside us or let the wolf be the wolf? And if we let the wolf inside us be the wolf, are we going to be successful and happy? I say, and this is my opinion, you don't have to agree with me. <clears throat> if you let the wolf inside you take over your life, you will never be happy. Because he have a mentality of wolf. Wolf, he want to grab what he don't have. When a wolf, he see a female, he try to compete with other male. It doesn't matter if the female have a male already or not, you know, that he want to have it, that's it. So if he is a stronger, if he can win the fight or scare or intimidate the other wolf, that one will his you know retreat and he will have the female. So this is the mentality of somebody he have a wolf he don't want to control. He never have end for his needs and he is never going to be satisfied. Therefore, this person doesn't matter how much he accomplished as a wolf, he is still poor and he accomplished nothing. Do you want to be the person who accomplished nothing? Even though you live as a wolf, you fight as a wolf, and you scare everybody as a wolf? So being that wolf did not help you. You are still empty, empty-handed. For a very simple reason. Nothing is satisfying your needs nothing so it doesn't matter how much you own you're still poor you want more you're a wolf you don't accept to have enough you don't accept you don't you don't stand and say okay you know what i am now so secure and everything is good so i'm going to stop to be a wolf you will not like somebody saying the wolf of wall street exactly those people, they have millions, <coughs> sorry, if not hundreds of millions. Are they going to stop being wolves in Wall Street? No. They want to have more. And one of the funny things about, you know, being a wolf, uh, beside being poor, because you feel yourself poor, you know, uh, 
the more you get wealthy, if we're, if the world is correct, the more you find yourself, your expenses is higher. And those expenses, not necessarily about money. Let us make it uh, expand the word expenses. So when you are a wolf, you lose your friends. You have no friends. So the expenses is what? You have no friends. Nobody trusts you. Nobody likes you. And the second you get weak, somebody will stab you. Because you are a wolf. You stabbed them before. So being a wolf have a lot of expenses. You might be successful for some time, but time will come and bigger wolf will take on you. So what we should do as a Christians, especially we are going to live between wolves. How we can live between wolves if we don't have teeth? And this is one of the you know problems some Christians they struggle with. They understood the Bible wrongly. They think the Bible made them literally sheep between wolves, as Jesus said, I will leave you like you know, like sheep between wolves. But in fact, the Lord He left us with something very important, which is wisdom. Wisdom can overcome the sheep weakness and can destroy the wolf sharp teeth. Wisdom is very important to be successful, to be protected, and to be able to destroy all your enemies, which you don't want to be, you know, to be their enemy, but they are there. Uh, somebody saying, Re, uh, uh, Rhodes uh, Quatch saying, uh, CP, I would say wolf win battle, but sheep wins war. I mean, uh, <clears throat> you see here, we are not talking about the animal as a wolf. We are talking about, <laughs> uh, you know, us being controlled by the wolf desire, the animal desire. Same time, when we speak about being a sheep, uh, it doesn't mean that you should be, you are going to be the stupid, the naive, where people bite you and take advantage of you and fool you and humiliate you. No, no, no. This is not what this should happen. It should not happen at all. We are talking about us controlling the wife, in, in, the wolf inside us. We, can, we cannot kill the wolf inside us. You cannot. You cannot. You as a creature, you are built in a certain way. You have the needs of the wolf. You have the desire. You have the accessories. Uh, you have the ability. And you are way smarter than an animal. We call him the wolf. So you can actually accomplish way more harm than an animal called wolf. So. We cannot kill that wolf inside us, but we can control the wolf to be a smart one. A wolf who can lead us into success. So I can be the wolf who protect his household from an evil beast is coming to my house. You should be. So in a second, you will turn into a wolf. Somebody coming to harm your family, you'll find yourself as a human suddenly from a very friendly person to a person is willing to kill, to defend. Well, that's a good wolf. That's not a bad one. So we don't want to kill the wolf inside us and we don't want to have a wolf controlling us. But having a wolf inside us is a design made by God for a good reason. So what is bad is that when the wolf take over our life and we turn into animals. So this is why we as a Christian, we believe that Jesus, he came to restore humanity inside ourself. Being a wolf will make you lose your humanity. So you justify the killing of somebody to take his money or to take his wife or to take his wealth, his property 
or even to kill him just for fun. There's people, they kill people, they don't know even why they kill them. They like violence. So we come back to our humanity by the Messiah. So what the Messiah, he does, he reshape the wolf inside us. So when the man, he want to marry a woman, he don't act like a wolf going for a hunt. And when the woman, she is looking for a man to marry her, she will not go in for a hunt as a female wolf. And that will replace the wolf inside us with decency. So then our needs will be legitimate and we will be able to be happy because remember, as we said, if you have the spirit of wolf inside you, you always want to have more and you are always seeking intimidate, like you intimidate somebody else in order to be in control. But if you are a person who control your wolf, then you are happy with your place. So, you know, you get married. You don't need another female. That's it. I'm married. I like her. I love her. I'm, I'm satisfied. Another female will not make me happier. Another female, she will destroy my life, actually. Because I will be between two or maybe three or maybe four. And then I will spend my wealth and my time and a lot of pressure, a lot of drama, a lot of garbage. So why I want to do that to myself? So either we let the wolf inside us go and control you, and then you will be self-destroyed, or you drive your wolf the way, the way you want the wolf to go, in a right way, based on your moral understanding and what we as a human we have as ethic. There's many times, there's things you can do, actually nobody, nobody even knows. Let us say you go to a store, uh, and uh, you know, I, I remember once, uh, I bought something, the girl, she gave me the change. She gave me way more when, than what I gave her, so when I went out, I was looking, what is this, what she gave me back? I can just take it and go. So if I let the wolf inside me, and now I can go and buy another T-shirt. Why well, I want to return the money? I did not steal it. She gave it to me by her hand, willingly. So I can say to myself, well, okay, you know what? This is legitimate. I convinced myself that I did not even take it. I did not fool her. I did not lie to her. I did not do anything. She start counting. I don't know where her brain is. You know, maybe she is worried about something, her family. You never know. So she gave way more extra back than what I should have. Actually, more than I paid. Way more. So if you let your yourself go with the current, which is today, is the major current for everything around you. If you go in the street right now, what do you see? You see women wearing very crazy stuff, you know. Uh, like, you know, for me, I, I don't want to be rude to ladies here. I'm sure some they are doing that. Like when I see a woman wearing those uh, long eyelashes, I find them very silly and very stupid. And the first thing come to my head, that the wolf inside this woman is in control. He made her think that she is not good looking unless she have those things which look so stupid and look so weird and fake and dummy. So the wolf inside her control her mind. So now she is buying accessories, putting accessories, fake boobs, fake eyelashes, fake hair, fake glasses, fake eyes colors, fake butt. I don't know. I mean, there's endless fake stuff. But then when you go to your bedroom and you start taking them off, how it feel? How 
how it really feels. I am sure it feels horrible, especially if you are a young lady and you do not need those things. I mean, if a woman, she is old, she needs to put extra makeup, I understand. But mostly those who do those things is the young ones. When a woman, she walk in the street and her skirt is not even one inch. I mean, what are you trying to accomplish? Simply, the wolf inside you decide to hunt. You want to hunt the attention of men. So now you became a sexual object, not a lady. You are not a lady no more. You are a sexual object because a man, he see nothing but a woman almost naked. And she do that for no reason. Like, are you going to the, are you in the beach swimming? Let us say you are wearing a swimming suit. No. You are walking in the street and your skirt is one inch. You are walking in the street and your blouse is see-through. So why we do those things is just to get the attention. We are in the hunt. The wolf inside us want to hunt as many as we can. And then there's many males will give us attention because of the skin, because of the ass, because of the legs, because of the lips, because of the fake eyelashes. Many they will give attention. And then from those men, we will find the hunt, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. One of them, maybe, maybe two, maybe, we don't know. They are good for the hunt. It's like it's a trap. Same for the men. <clears throat> the men, they don't use those things usually. The men, they have different accessories. A very expensive car, you know, like you see all those pimps, like Andrew Tits. Why, what is the connection between a pimp and those expensive, extremely expensive cars? Do you know what the connection? Because those cars are the magnet for the low trashy class, you know, women. So they understand very well that those cars will bring a lot of flies to their shit. Excuse my language. So they bring those very fancy cars and they place them so they can get the attention. The same as those females wearing very short skirts, showing their boobs. So it is all about what exchange of a product. Uh, Isaac, we have a topic and we are not talking about, about Christmas. And how Christmas is a pagan day. Isn't it the angels themselves, they come to earth to celebrate, to announce the Christmas day? Isn't it kings went to the, to, to, to the Lord to celebrate three kings? So how a Christmas day is a pagan day? It's a Christmas, it's about Christ. Is Christ is pagan? So this is stupid. You know, people, they say stupid things, and you are smarter. So going back to our topic, If we decide to live like wolves, then we will go and join a filthy university like Andrew Tits. Because what? Because you now you understand that this wolf, he was able to get so rich and he got all those hookers around him. So you decide to be a pimp like him and you think this is success. And then you see that they say to you that someone like this, he have a great influence on young ones. Why young ones? Because young ones are, are fool. Young ones are have low experience in life. Young ones is easy to deceive, to control, to drive. You know, like you will see all those who they go, they want to join Al Qaeda, they want to kill, they want to commit suicide. They are young, very young. An old man don't do that. An old man he don't go and explode himself. You will not see an old man doing that. You will see only very young. Because they are foolish, easy to control, easy to drive. Few words, hey, you know, you know, okay, let's do it, you know, okay, bye bye, you know, and then he go and they die. <clears throat> and you tell them you will get versions are waiting for you, and he's horny. So now our duty, if we are the growing one and the mature, our duty is not only to control the wolf inside us, but to train people around us, family members, children, how not to be driven by wolves. 
and not to be an animal who seek his needs by being an animal. Are you with me? So if a woman, she want to find a husband, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong. Same for the man. That's, that's, a, that's the right thing to do. How that can be wrong. But it's going to be very wrong if we practice the animal hunt. The animal hunt never been something about honesty. You see, when the cat, she want to catch a, a mice, she don't go in front of the mice and say, I'm here. She sneaks, she go around, she walks slow. I mean, it's amazing how they do it. So if a woman, she want to get married, and she find that she can get married by short skirt, well, you might get married by short skirt, but you might get divorced by short skirt too. Why? Because the man who married you, he did not like you. He liked your legs. So as soon as he see other women legs, nicer than yours, he will leave you. If you were able to convince a man that he should marry you because you have big breasts, which is funny. I mean, with my respect to everybody, I don't know. I mean, that's really funny that some, some people, they convince themselves that the women have big breasts is, this, is, is more beautiful. We are not marrying cows, we are marrying women. Same time, you are marrying a person, not boobs. So if you convince a man that he marry you because you have a plastic surgery and now you have a boost of silicone and they bounce like a balloon, well, he will leave you for the same reason. As soon as he see a woman, she have better balloons than yours, he will give, you know, he will fart at you and he will turn his back and he say bye-bye. Because simply you were in a hunt and he was in a hunt. He was hunting for big boobs. You gave him your boobs. He got what he want. Later he got something better. Okay, this is what he's looking for and this is what you got. But if you are a woman who is not hunting using those stupid things, you are hunting for a man who is, you know, decent. Someone he loves you. Someone he care for you. Someone he is not going to cheat on you someone he accepts you the way you are you know without the fake makeup and the 50 centimeter long eyelashes which can be good for a fan in the barbecue outdoor so if a man he loves you for the way you look like he will never leave you he took you the way this way he knew how you look like and he adore you the way you are but if you fool a man by those flashy stuff, or, you know, let us say by sexual temptation, eh, he will leave you for the same reason, because he got you for that reason, and that reason was not legitimate. So, if we let the wolf inside us to be in the hunt, not morality, we're always going to be losers, even if we accomplish the mission. You see, you will accomplish the mission as a wolf, but still, it is a big failure. So a woman, she marry a man because he's so rich. She favor a man because he have money. And she refuse a man, He maybe he loved her, but she don't have money. Well, she will get the money, for sure. But then she will notice that she did not get what she is looking for. She is still unhappy. She will never be happy because this marriage never was real and nothing about it real. It's just about material. Then maybe even she will leave this husband if in the future she found another one, a friend of him, maybe he's more rich. She divorced the first one, she go to the second one, she cheat, etc. She's in a hunt. You know, the, I, I told you a story before about a fisherman. This fisherman, he go every day, early in the morning, very early, you know, like maybe 3 a.m. in the morning. He go fishing. By 7 a.m., they go back. 
by eight they are already they they sold whatever fish they have and then they go to like a cafe in the small fishing if you know fish uh, fisherman village and you know he sat with his friends enjoying his time the rest of the day so there was a you know a city man coming to to the town for vacation so he liked this fisherman how hard working he is so he told him what do you do now for the rest of the day he said nothing he said nothing he said yeah nothing I just enjoy myself with my friends he said to him you know if you work eight hours extra you can double your income the fisherman said okay I'm listening he said if you double your income in one year you can buy a boat of your own in two years you can buy two boats and then you hire more fishermen in three years you can buy three boats and that goes etc and then you will have a company and you will be rich and you will be able to retire early and you can enjoy your life after the plan has been said <laughs> the fisherman he said so you are saying to me after all of those things I accomplish what I will do he says you can sit enjoy your time with your friends so the fisherman he said to him isn't it this is what I'm doing right now <laughs> is already enjoying his life so I will work I will spend the rest of my life to collect money to, to end that I can retire and sit with my I'm here sitting with my friends I'm happy so all the business plan is to make me rich to come back to zero and then in fact if I become rich my friends will not be my friends I will be different I will not be the same simple man who those simple men enjoy me and enjoy them so the businessman he's trying to corrupt the mind this is the wolf of Wall Street trying to corrupt the mind of this poor man who is happy with his life so we convince him to work like a donkey for the coming 20 years so after 20 years he will come to the coffee shop to drink coffee and relax what he's doing it right now So when we seek to accomplish things in the wolf mentality, we will end in the wolf coffee shop where everybody around us is a wolf and everybody around us want to snatch a piece of us if we get weak. You see a wolf, he never enjoy his security because sooner or later, a stronger wolf he will take over now for sure you don't have to agree with me uh, you choose how you live your life but this is my advice to those who care if you have the wolf mentality you will be always unsatisfied and you will never accomplish anything it doesn't matter how much money you make it doesn't matter how much things how many things you have the wolf inside you will not make you happy because you always want more You cannot stop that wolf because you let him take over you for a long time. So even if one day you said to yourself, you know what, that's it. I have, uh, you know, I mean, I do not need more of this, uh, but it's going to be extremely hard. It's like, you know, somebody is addicted to drugs. How you can stop suddenly? You know, there is a, 
not much different between the wolf and the dog. Both of them, they are from the same family. Even they have almost the same sound. The same head, the same number of teeth, and they bite. And both they eat meat. But there is someone, you can trust him to sleep next to you in the bed. And there is someone you will never trust. You will be scared like hell. The difference is, there is someone is loyal, protective, don't cheat. And there is other one, simply he is a wolf. He have no loyalty except to his teeth and his desire so you have always to make a choice either you decide to live with the wolves and you become one of them and then you have no one to trust because you know even if you live between good people because you have a wolf inside you that wolf will not let you enjoy trust of anything. You don't trust. You always suspect everything. You're a wolf. You want to snatch. You want to steal. You want to take. You want to come in the dark. And because you have such a personality, then you will never be in the relaxed mood. Because simply always you are in fear and always you are suspecting your ears. They have to keep moving, you know, the radar. Who is going to hunt me? Because you're a wolf, you think the same way. You know, when a person has a good heart, he might make a statement. It might be stupid or foolish or whatever. But when he speaks in front of someone, he has a bad spirit inside him. When this person with good heart, he says something, right away, the one with bad spirit, he transforms the sentence into something totally different, totally different meaning. Why? Because the other person is satanic, evil. He think about what you said different from what you meant. The beast inside him digest your words in different way. But if a person who have a good heart he says something, even if it's stupid, and he is speaking those words in front of people who have good heart. Nobody will take it in a very bad way, because both they have good heart. So it's very important for us, in order to control our wolf, is to learn how to control our desire. Our desire for money, our desire for accomplishing things. Like, you remember last week, I was, I have a very bad flu. One of you here, and I'm not going to say her name, she knows herself, she sent me an email, wonderful lady, she said to me, CP, I'm going to donate for you $200 so you can go and see a doctor. And I think she said, if I need more, let me see the message. Anyway, so I emailed her back and I said, we'll save your money. It doesn't matter how much money you send me. I will never go and see a doctor. Now, this woman, she have a very good heart. Very good heart. She's trying to do what? She's trying to help a person she think he need help. I can be the wolf. And I can say, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm coughing. I'm, you know, horrible shape. I need the doctor and it's expensive. Uh, you know, yeah, I might need more. And this poor woman, she might send me even more. What I say to her, let me read the message for you. No worries. And then her name, I will not say it. I don't go to doctor, no matter how much you... I will not read all of it. It's long. 
I watch your video. I wanted to help you. Only 200 US dollars. So you can see a physician. I don't know if this is enough or not. Uh, and she's explaining that she, you know, she can ascend now because of Patreon more than this. So if I want to be the wolf, how many of you would like to help now if I say I need help? I'm sure a lot of you will be so excited and happy and, you know, they want to help uh, Christian Prince. Many of you, I know, I feel your love to me. I can be that wolf and fool all of you. You can always be the wolf. You can always take advantage of the love of others. You know, when the Bible says, be aware of false teachers who come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but in fact they are wolves. It fit perfectly. So there is people, they have good heart. And sometimes those people who have a good heart, they can be abused by the one who have the mentality and the spirit of a wolf. And this is why it's very important for us too to be smart. It's good to have a good heart. It's good to try to help somebody. But always you have to be vigilant and remember there is people who they are really evil, even if they try to present themselves that they are the good person. In fact, I am going to be worried more from somebody coming to you in a close of a sheep from someone is coming to my door and he is a wolf. Because the sheep, look, it can be the wolf who is trying to hunt me, but he wants me to relax and turn my back when I open the door for him. But the wolf who is coming to your door in the shape of a wolf, you are ready for him. You, you know, you saw him, he's a wolf. The scary one is the one who come to you in different shape. And here I will show you an example of stupidity. Yeshua, Rab, he said, CP, do you think Jews are also wolves? What is it? What does that mean? What does that mean for, the, for God's sake? I mean, guys, do you think Jews are also wolves? What does that mean? Why is the Jews coming from different galaxy than the rest of the human being? Whatever we say, it goes for everybody. Why people are stupid? Are you driven by your hate? You, do you have to mention the word Jews now? Like the wolf inside you could not enjoy the time and the conversation without going and hitting the Jews. Like let us jump in the Jews and eat some of them. You have to jump and to attack the Jews. As if the Jews are different species. Do you think the Jews are wolf CP? Oh, yeah, I are. I think you're an elephant. Your nose is so long. This is why we always have to be smart and not to let the foolish one to turn us into wolves. You see the division, the God of division is Satan. You, you know, we as a Christian, we don't hate Muslims. Do we? We don't. We don't. Imagine if Muslims, they think about us the same way. Then Satan, he feel. Do you agree? If Muslims, they did not feel the need of killing and attacking non-Muslims. And a Christian already believed that we should love our enemy. 
which means it doesn't matter really if you are a Muslim or not. We don't hate anybody. So imagine if the Muslims don't feel need to kill the Jews or the Christians or the Hindus or the Buddhists, and the Christian already believe that they should love everybody. Satan, he failed. The wolf, the biggest wolf in society, Satan, he just failed. When you read in the Bible where it says, love never fail. Love never fail. Who agree with this statement, regardless if you are a Christian or not? It's absolutely true. If we can make the whole world live a society of love, we do not need the Department of Defense. We do not need missiles. We do not need tanks. We do not need guns. We do not, we do not need anything. In fact, nobody will be homeless. And nobody will not be able to send his children to, to, to school. Because, base, because people, they have love, they provide and they support each other. Because people, they have love, they will have zero crimes and zero criminals. And we have zero jail. Crimes and criminals and vicious attack and bloodshed and rapist and theft, all of it because the wolves are in the street. Because a human being decided to let the wolf take over him. And this is what we are today talking about. Is how we can fight the wolf inside us. Otherwise, each one of you can be turned to a very vicious aggressive wolf we hear from time to time somebody go in the mall or market or in the street start shooting people you want to just kill why because the devil inside him the wolf inside him in this moment in charge each one of us can do that we can terrify a city He will be very famous, but he will be very famous as a stupid, evil person, laughable, even though maybe you are scary, but you are the lowest of the lowest. So today, our topic was and it is about how not to be the wolf. However, remember one thing I said to you. It's good to be a wolf sometime. It's good to be a wolf sometime. When? When you defend your family. When you defend your children. When you defend someone at risk which mean to be a wolf to defend, to rescue, like you have a strong a strength of a, of a wolf or a strength of a lion. The teeth of the lion to rescue, not to kill. Even though maybe you need to kill in order to rescue. Like somebody is coming to your house when a rape your wife, want to kill your children. What do you do? Are you going to be the sheep? No, you have to be the lion you have to use all the teeth you have so there's a time for war and there's time for peace there's a time where you are the sheep which is maybe let us say 99 percent of your time but when it's time to defend your family and your society and your people and your whatever beloved people you have you have the permission of god to be the lion of judah Are you with me? Sometime you have to be a beast in order to fight the beast. 
sometimes you have to shed the blood. You don't like it, don't love it, you hate it, but you have to. For the nature of the crime, sometimes to stop that crime, you have to use the tools of death. Do we have any question? So today our topic was not about Muhammad and his garbage. I decided to, you know, to have such a topic to answer the gentleman who asked me for help in the email. <clears throat> All right. We know why people, they are obsessed of beating me. I keep receiving messages from people. They want to meet me. And I, you know, why you want to meet me? I'm, I'm serious. Why you want to meet me? Why anyone want to meet me? What for? Stop sending me messages, especially if you are a female. I come here for a reason, and the reason is so clear. And there is no other reason in my agenda. If I go meet people because I'm doing a seminar, well, I'm doing a seminar, then you meet me there. Otherwise, you will not. I'm not interested to have a coffee with anyone, to go in a coffee shop with anyone. I am not interested in this uh, social, uh, you know, environment, uh, you know. Here we go, you are here, we meet. You want to talk to me, you call me in public. When I say Christians can call me, you can call me. You know, you know, if you love me, if you love me, really, if you love me as a brother, then especially women, they should stay away from me. Because remember, we are trying to control the wolf inside us. And there is many temptation around us. A lot of temptation. In order to protect yourself, you have to take an extra protection tools, or let's say method. Otherwise, many men before you, they fail for the same stupid reason. Promise, CP, we all love you. I understand that, but there's no need for, you know, people to... Sometimes I feel like, like it's a harassment, you know? That's it. I said I don't want to meet anybody. That, that's it. If I go to your country one day and I do a seminar, go, you know, we uh, will come. Good to see you. You know, when I was in the Philippines last time <clears throat> and I did a seminar, the, uh, the church they did not mention my name. They did not say Christian Prince. So they just said we have a seminar about Islam and we have a, you know, a special guest will speak today. So when I was speaking on the stage, then they took a break. Then there's two girls, you know, people, they come shake hands with you, introduce themselves, etc. There's two girls that were standing and they were talking and like almost like people, because now we go back, the break is almost over. So I will go back on the stage. And then one of them, she said, I, I have a question. I said, what? Are you Christian Prince? <laughs> I said, maybe. She said, see, I told you. <laughs> this is his voice. <laughs> so they were discussing if this is me or not. So I don't mind if people, you know, see me and meet me. No problem. 
But when you start harassing a person, that is not right. If a person he said, I don't want to meet anyone, that's it. Respect his wish. We go to a seminar, you meet me there. God bless you. I will be happy to shake hands with you. All right. Do you visit UK? Well, I've been in the UK a long time ago, but not anymore. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Any question? No, no. Actually, the ones that are trying to contact me, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very sure they are good people, you know. But they keep asking the same thing. They want to invite me there. They want to meet me here, and I say no. And then they keep sending me message. I block them. They do it again. But I'm very sure they are good people. But I'm not really. I hope they will. I hope they are listening. <clears throat> Thank you, Mario. Any question? Do you do <laughs> similar with Zach and Mike boys? <laughs> Sometime. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you see, like, uh, actually, my seminar depend. If I have a translator, then the seminar is not going to be the same because, uh, you know, you lose, uh, let us say, you lose the spirit of, uh, you know, like when people hear you directly and they understand the language, it's different. Uh, like, sometimes you do seminars and you have a translator because nobody understands English. For me, this is the worst. Because simply people will not enjoy a sense of a humor very well. And uh, mostly the translator will not be able to translate good. In fact, once the translator, like, you know, after I finished the seminar, uh, I went to the house of the bishop. Very nice guy. And then, you know, he served uh, some like uh, tea or something and cookies, his wife, very wonderful lady. And then he said to me, the only thing I don't understand, why someone like you smoke? I said, who, what? He said, why you smoke? I said, who said I smoke? He said, the translator. <laughs> so imagine the translator with me on the stage in the church. He said that I do smoke, but I never ever smoke a cigarette all my life. I never mentioned that in the seminar. And the translator was there with us. I said, what what, what you told them? He said, oh, I thought you said, I said, no, what? We didn't even speak about cigarettes. So imagine something I never said. It turned to be, I am smoking now. And you know, this is church, very conservative people, and they don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't. So he was wondering, I mean, why he smoke? You know? <laughs> So he was he was trying he's preparing himself to advise me to quit uh, to quit smoking. I I told him uh, tell him tell him I never smoked cigarette all my life. What are you talking about? You know. So having uh, uh, someone translating to you not only he can translate wrong and he can even put you in trouble. You know. He can say something you did not even see. No, it's not evil. Like uh, it's a by mistake. <clears throat> Yeah. You are so calm and serious, but when the Zachary Nag character is so the opposite. No, in fact, when I do a seminar, uh, like, you know, it's very, people love it. It's very funny. It's a, like a comedy show, actually. Uh, uh, but but that happen only usually when there is people who the audience they speak English. You know you do not need translator. The second you need translator, that's it. I mean the meaning is gone. You know. <clears throat> do you mind being guest in other 
podcast shows yeah i don't mind you know i don't prefer to go to any someone show because always i am disappointed about how people they uh, perform their show I, first of all i don't have a show this is not a show you know here we have a friendly family talk uh so my experience each time i get invited somewhere i find it very boring to be honest with you and disappointing like imagine like once i did without saying who the name they asked me do you have a gray hair what uh i don't know i mean questions very very stupid and very silly i thought like they are inviting me to talk about they want to ask me serious questions something hard to answer about islam etc and then they are asking me questions about how, how my look And then I said to myself, from now on, I will never be in a program. The one who is running the program is a female. I'm not saying all females will do the same. But instead of being something serious, you know, then suddenly I found like, you know, what color you like? What, what does this have to do? What, you brought me here to ask me what color I like? What is this? Anyway, like you know, there is a you know there is some people they uh, they make a good uh, let us say companion like David Wood and uh, Apostate Prophet. They go always live together. You know they match. Okay, you know people like it, find them funny. Yeah, good for them. But for me, I find such a format very boring. Because nothing there is serious, as said, and nothing, no real education. You know, like we bring a topic about he said, she said, ha ha ha, you know, that, you know, that, that, you know. it's like a coffee shop. Uh, but people like it, no problem. I mean, maybe you can learn something. But in our program, we put reference on the screen, we share links, uh, we challenge people. It's like something really, it's like a, a classroom, but in a, in a you know, in a family way, like, you know, study at home. My young bro is built bullied in school. Encourage him to report to the teacher. But what if the teacher did not take action? I'm getting anxious. Well, my friend, you should not teach your, you should teach your brother how to fight the bully, not to report to teacher. Because if your your brother or your son, let us say, do not know how to stand against the bully, then always you need the protection of a teacher. And this is not the right way. There's always somebody is going to bully him. So what you need to do, you need to train your brother how to stand for himself and how to stop. The, you know, you know why people bully people because they find them weak. They find them they are very soft. They will not bully someone is aggressive. So sometimes, you remember we mentioned that sometimes you have to have teeth and you have to be a lion, even though we have to control our lion. So it's not the right way is to tell him to go and tell the teacher. No, the right way is to teach your brother how to defend himself and not to let anyone to bully him. And he have to put them in their stand and he have to do whatever he needs to do. What report to teacher? I never even, you know, I mean, everyone is different, right? But I find it very wrong to make a child think that the one who protect him is a teacher. The teacher will not mostly care. A teacher is somebody doing a job. Eh, you know, okay, he will speak to them. Don't bully him. Uh, two minutes after they go in the, you know, the corridor or in the bathroom, restroom, and they bully him again. The only way, my friend, is to teach your brother or your son how to stop the bully, how to defend himself. Nothing else.
Any other question? In my lifetime, nobody ever dared to bully me. Never. And there is a reason. Because the bully always, they see someone, they think they can bully. If they knew that there is a consequences to bully this person, they will never do it. If if they knew that you are just, uh, you know, they make fun of, and this is what the bully is about. A bunch of stupid kids, they have a bad family, you know, their family did not teach them good manner. They go to a kid, you know, he is uh, very... Uh, maybe skinny or he is not uh, he don't have a strong character he is shy you know they start making fun of him so the first thing is is to teach your brother how he can be strong even if you need to take him and uh, give him you know class to fight you know physical fight why not you know such a training never fail you know, you might need it one day. <clears throat> but we don't want to talk about Islam today. Just give me questions. Have nothing to do with that. This is not about big person or a small person. Big person can be bullied too. You see, remember, people bully a person not because he's a small, tiny, or big. No. You can be so big and they will bully you. If they feel that you are a coward, you will not respond and you don't dare to respond, then everybody will bully you. doesn't matter if you are 10 foot tall or 1 foot tall. There is a very wrong understanding that bullying happens because you are short in size. In fact, it can be the opposite. A person short in size, he can be very aggressive and scary. It's not about the size. It's about how far he can go. <clears throat> how you respond to physical bullying, you defend yourself physically. As simple as that. If somebody want to beat me, I will beat him. Do we need a question about it? Because you see, those are not coming to do like for a reason. They are just for a bully, just to make fun of you. So there is no way to stop them unless you show them that you, you touch my hand. I'm going to show you what will happen to your hand. You push me, you beat me, you slam my face. Then I will show you what will happen to your face. As long as there is no consequence of their behavior, they they are just enjoying the bullying the second you show them that you are willing to to do what you need to do then they will never get close to you in fact i believe that the bully he do a, a, a bully test what does that mean first time you come i will tell you a story about what what happened to me i moved to a new school i moved to a new school nobody know me there a neighbor, she told my mom that in this school, there's a gang who bully everybody. So she told her, anyone, any new kid, he come to school, they beat him first day. That's it. Without doing anything. You know, you are a new kid, they beat you. It's a test, you know, like they come to you. So this woman, she told my mom, my mom, she told me, she said, this is what this woman said. Uh, so tomorrow you are going to school. I said to her, don't worry. She said, send with you some. She said, no, what are you talking about? Yeah. So I went to school. And she described to her what they would do. She said, she will, she will, like, they will group themselves, like, you know, six, seven boys. And they will come to you. And they will say to you, where are you from? You know? And they start pushing you, and then they will start beating you. They will beat you for sure. There's no question about it. So I went to school. I look for them. I look where is the, you know, she describe how they do, what they look like, etc. So I look for them. Obviously, right away, I saw them. So I came to them. Me, I, I came to them myself. So I said to myself, why am I going to wait for them to come to me 
to beat me up. Let me go and beat them up. <laughs> and this is exactly what I did. I know they are evil. They confirmed to me they will beat anyone come to school. It doesn't matter. You are nice, not nice, bad, good, doesn't matter. So I went there. I walked to them. I said, who of you are looking for a fight? Who dare? They, like, they are looking at me like, what? You know? And then they start looking around to see if I have people with me. Like, is he alone? I mean, who is this guy? This is the new kid that's coming here. So they start looking around, and they were like, huh. So one of them, after he like, they start looking around, and they said, there's nobody. So one of them, he got brave. He said, me. Right away, I hit him in his Because I know they will hit me in two seconds from now. So what I'm waiting for? So I hit him in his face right away. I made him bleed. They, you know, I grab him and all of them, they start beating me together. So I'm beating one guy and all of them, they are beating me in the same time. But second day, all of them, they become my friends. Because they notice that this, this is not the guy you want to play with. From the first day. So you know they are evil. You know they will beat you. And I said to myself, what I will do? There are many. I'm alone. I'm, I'm not going to bring my family with me every day or the cousins, you know. <laughs> we are not going to launch a war. So I have to deal with it. So I look for them. Who of you want to fight? They got intimidated in the beginning. And then one of them, he got brave. He said, me. I did not give him a chance even to speak one more word. And then right away, they noticed that this guy will never stop beating us as long as we try to beat him. Second day, we become friends. And then later, I become the boss. This is how they are. <clears throat> and then after that, actually, I... Uh, you know, if they try to bully anyone, I stand against them and nobody dare to do it anymore, you know. Uh, always you have to take a stand, otherwise you will be just another victim and they will bully you and they will beat you. And if they are going to do it anyway, okay, do whatever it needs to do, you know. <clears throat> when you are a coward, Everybody is brave. I hope my words is clear. When you are a coward, everybody is brave. Except you. If you fear the criminals, they will use your fear against you. Your fear is your weakness. CP choose violence? Well, I, I, you know, you have to choose violence sometime. Why not? Now, you know, Israel is fighting Hamas. So what we do? They come to you. They have RBG. They have AK, you know, 47. They have a grenade. They rape women. They kill women. What do we do? Do we give them hugs? No. You know, we make them shish kebab. So always there is somebody evil who try to take advantage of you. And if they find that you are too much civil, that will be your weakness. There's time to be civil, as the Bible says. Time for peace, time for war. Time for peace is when you are civil. Time for war, when you are very uncivil. Do you drink wine as St. Paul teaches us to do sometime? I don't know, you know, it's like you, like you, are, uh, uh, you are understanding what St. Paul in the wrong way, what he said. You see, <clears throat> and I find the question is very funny. Do you drink wine as St. Paul he teaches us? This is what he teaches us? St. Paul he teaches us to drink wine sometime? Are you sure? He did not teach you seven, uh, like Pepsi Cola or seven up? Don't you find yourself silly? And do I need anyone to teach me what to drink, what not to drink? The Lord, he says, little of it can bless your heart. Little. So the Bible speaks about drinking wine as a medicine. 
as a benefit, not as a drunk. So drinking wine is not about you drinking. It's about you getting the benefit. So all these silly people, they justify being a drunk and being a stupid. St. Paul himself, he said, drunken will not enter heaven. Is that correct, guys? If you are a person who gets drunk, you are not qualified to be in heaven. Sexual immorality, thieves, criminals, liars, drunken, they don't inherit the kingdom of God. That is the word. <clears throat> Anything else? Anyone? Have you thought about making a theory about the beauty of Christianity? The topic could be to unite Christians, regardless of sect. Well, this is what we do every time we go live, right? Or don't we always fight division? Like everybody knows here, that in my platform, we don't allow people to, uh, to divide. We don't care really if you are a Catholic or a Protestant or Orthodox, because simply we should not be. We should not be Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. We should be just following Jesus, Christian. That's what the Bible, you know, this is the name. The only name is given to us in the Bible, nothing else. Christians. And we do not need a bishop or a pope or a priest. It doesn't matter if he's a Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. We need Jesus only. So leadership is not about a priest. Leadership is about the wise man leading the one who is less wise the wise man how he can be wise is by following the bible someone he understand the word of god very well and he advise people to act accordingly so we do not need someone to say to us you can bless same sex marriage that's not what the bible says you cannot bless wickedness and you cannot bless the wicked that's against the bible so we do not need priests and bishops the bible is there the teaching of Christ is there. You see, neither of the disciples of Jesus were priests. They are not. They were fishermen. Normal, average people, you know. I got a question about feet washing. More than half of my church endorse the washing and other half don't. You know, first of all, what kind of a church endorse and other half don't endorse? Isn't this what Jesus did? So can we deny what Jesus did? So if there is other half don't like it, that means this half don't like what Jesus did. So they are not Christians. If you are talking about it practice as a tradition, I believe this is not what Jesus, he wanted us to do. You see, uh, washing feet is not about tradition. It's about something real. So when Jesus, he washed the feet of his disciples, he was not teach us a tradition. Like, you know, empty tradition. Like, well, let me wash your feet. What does that mean? What Jesus, he was teaching us that you cannot be a master unless you are a servant. So what we should endorse is the teaching the purpose of it, that you cannot be a master unless you are a servant. That is the whole purpose of this. Otherwise, Jesus is not trying to clean them. They are clean already. Those are Jews are very, the Jews, they have a phobia about cleaning. Literally. They have put a dish inside a dish inside a dish so nobody can touch it. So, he is not teaching them how to be clean, and he is not cleaning them. He was teaching them that in order for you to be my disciple, and you go to the world, 
you don't go and claim we are sent by Jesus, be proud about yourself, and you give your hand out like those bishops these days, they give their hands to kiss their hands, you know, his highness, his excellency, his uh, majesty. He do, what is this? What does this have to do with Jesus? You are not being a servant, you are being excellency now. Since when the servant is called excellency? Are you with me? If I am your servant, you don't call me excellency. Or your highness and your holiness. What your holiness? Who called Peter your holiness? <laughs> Who called Paul your holiness? I mean, this is real. See, this is why we have to be careful. There's men, they took over our churches and they make it a source of power. So now I am Excellency. I have a power over you. Christ himself never been called Excellency. Is that correct? Or I'm making things up. Always people who seek positions and titles, they are not serving God. You know, sometimes people, they call me uh, uh, pastor or Christian prince. I say, don't say that. Okay, minister, uh, I'm, you know, don't call me minister. Did I say I'm minister? I'm not, I'm nobody. Don't give me any title. The second you give me a title, I lost it. I lost my position. What minister and what pastor and what bishop and, you know, they have a church system, I understand, you know, but I'm not part of it. Don't give me a title. And even the word servant, I don't fit for it. You see, the word servant, I'm not qualified. This is a big word. To be a servant of the Lord, this is a big responsibility. I'm not qualified for it. So if I refuse the word servant, how in the world I will accept other words? <clears throat> so always stay away from people who like titles. Because those people, they have a wolf inside them. <clears throat> and that wolf make them fight for higher position in the society, in the community. Stay away from that. That's what corrupt man. There is always reason for corruption. Uh, Isaac, I'm not here to explain to you Deuteronomy 14, why I would do that. Why? I mean, and how in the world, Isaac, you decide to explain only 14.26? What about the whole chapter? You see, one of the silly stuff people, they do. They choose a line and explain to me the line when this is a book and the book has chapters and the chapters they lead you to this line so when somebody he says to you explain to me such a line he is just an idiot I'm not calling you names I'm just saying you you are being an idiot In order to understand the book, you read it. You don't read a line. And if you read a chapter and you could not understand a line, that means you did not read the chapter. 
You are reading lines. So always, those who don't want to understand, they pick up a line. And they focus in one line. Because simply, they don't want to read the whole story. Anyway, focus with us on our topic. Anyone have a question? Don't tell me explain this and explain that. We have a topic. How long did it take you to study Islam to be able to argue on such a high? Okay. Well, you know, it's it's not about time. It's about uh, you know, let us say hard work, because time is very important for sure, and we need time. Like you need to read a book, you need time, right? But it's not really the time is the issue. You can educate yourself in three years more than somebody in 20 years. Why? Because in the three years you spend good. Actually, there is a homeless I see every day. I don't know even if he's a homeless, actually. I'm not sure. Because you don't take money from anybody. This guy, he sit and he have a book. And obviously he have maybe bad vision. So every day I see him in the road sitting. He is reading, even in the cold. The first thing I said to myself, how much education this person he have? I assure you, he is very, very, very well educated. I mean, this guy, he is a reading machine. And you can tell he enjoy it. He don't see even anyone walking by. All people walk in the street, he don't see them. His eyes is in the book. So, Education is not about how long, how many years. It's about how much you spend of your time on your education. If you go, the day is 24 hours, right? We spend eight hours at least sleeping. Those are gone. So by the age of 60, you step to 20 years. 20 years of your life is gone, totally gone, for nothing, just snoring. So imagine if you give from your day just two hours. How much education you will have in 20 years? If you read two hours a day, you will have a lot of education. Education is not a degree. has nothing to do with degrees. Degrees usually is just to give you a profession so you can make money. And usually those who have a degree they are uneducated. They are. They have zero education, actually. So an engineer, he knew how to do a specific thing in building. Let us say he's an architect. The other one, he is a civil engineer. The other one, he do a build dam. So this is his education. His education is limited in steel and concrete. And this is not. This is not even education. This is a profession. Education is something totally different. So education is not a degree, it's not about a time pass by, it's about how much you take care of yourself to learn. So I hope I answered you. So I can say all my life is a, is, a, is a process of education. I used to spend a lot of time since I was a kid to read. I used to walk and I told that many times. There's a big library, uh, but I'm not allowed to enter it because I was a kid. So what I do, there is a there is a section for kids. They have Mickey Mouse magazine, stupid magazine. I don't want to go there. So what I do, I wait for an, until an adult mature walking by to go to the library, the adult section. I walk next to him as if I am his son. This is the only way they allow you to get in. So I keep walking with this guy. He sat at the table. I sit next to him. Now the guy will be looking at me like what this kid is doing, but he cannot ask me, you know. Eh? He, don't, he will not say, hey, this is not my son. So I sit next to him, and I grab any book on the table. Because I cannot go and grab a book. I'm not allowed. People leave books on the table when they leave. So I sit next to this guy who supposedly, supposedly, like he's 
my father maybe supposed he so the guard or the library the laboratory guy library guy he think that i'm coming with him i sit at the table i grab a book i start reading i don't know what even the book is about i remember once i was just a little kid and the book was about sex that was like what <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah but it, because it's all it, it was like you know uh, it's it's a uh, maybe it's like a book for university you know purpose like you know uh, doctors there's pictures and images and <laughs> so i was maybe i don't know i was maybe eight years old and i started reading this book and i was like it's a, like a new a new world you know suddenly in the front of me so uh if you want to educate if you you want to have an education in your generation you start with them when they are kids not when they are adult so if you have a children, encourage them not to go and spend their time playing games and stupid things. Let them read, educate themselves. This is the best way to build the mind and intelligence and wisdom in the mind of a human being. In the same time, you have to be careful about what the kid is reading, because there's many, especially these days, you know, in my time, we don't have this woke, stupid culture where they are trying to fool you about who you are, male or female. So we have to be sure these days what kids are reading so we don't end with an idiot instead of being wise. Uh, all right. Got it saying, are you afraid that some someday